Billy, and what's up, everybody? It's your boy Billy Mac, another boys podcast for you, boys only podcast for you, where we talk about the Cowboys and the upcoming 2022 2023 season. Um, so Let's talk about that preseason game, shall we? Uh, I'm going to give you my five takeaways. Uh, let's see. I'm going to give you two honorable mentions, though. Um, question mark about the kicking game. If I remember if I remember correctly, Lerum missed like a 50-something yarder. Granted, it was altitude. Granted, it was raining. Uh... But regardless, the kicking game is still a question mark. And um, like uh, Brian Broaddus from uh, 105.3 The Fan, Super Bowl winning scout, former scout for the Dallas Cowboys, he doesn't even think the starting kicker is on the roster right now, which very well could be true. Um, I think in this point in our... I think at this point in where the Cowboys are going, I think we need to come to the realization because the Cowboy coaches, they want power kickers. They want guys that can hit from, you know, 55 and up. You know what I mean? I think I think we need to focus more on accuracy. We need somebody who can make kicks on a um, consistent basis. You know, we hadn't really had that since Dan Bailey before he got injured, and that I mean it was it was pretty much automatic with Dan Bailey. Those were good times, but now it's it's. We might need to change our focus a little bit, but that's just my opinion. Um, the second thing we need to understand is y'all do realize, and this was on DallasCowboys.com, over 20 players didn't even play the game. Basically, none of the starters played. Uh, Dak, Zeke, CD. Uh, Zach Martin, Tyler Biotis. I think, no, I think Biotis played maybe one or two series. But Tyron Smith, Micah, Marcus Lawrence, uh, Trayvon, um, what's his name? J. Ron Kirst, Malik Hooker, like, most of our starters didn't even play in this game. So we basically put nothing but second, third, fourth team guys out there. So even though we literally got our behinds handed to us, um, we didn't have any starters. But the issue that comes with that, yet and still, just like the past maybe 10 years have shown, we have depth, but the depth is not good. You know what I mean? Like, you look at teams like the Steelers and the Ravens and the, and the Rams. They don't have they, – they might lose a starter somewhere. They might lose several starters, especially the Patriots. They might lose several starters, but, like, the backups come in and play decently well. You know what I mean? They come in and they perform enough to where it doesn't seem like the ship is sinking. The Dallas Cowboys, on the other hand, we lose one starter and we we fumble all over the place. I, I, I do not get it. It makes me sick. It makes me very sick. And that's what I see with this team. It, it looks like our backup players are perennial backup players, second and third string guys that will never see the field on any other team. 
and you got guys on other teams. I mean, and this is 2020 hindsight. I might be completely wrong. But you got guys from other teams that could probably start for other teams that are playing backup roles. You know what I mean? So, but it just seems like with the Dallas Cowboys, our backups are backups, and they're they're not going to be anything more than backups. So, those are the two things I just wanted to throw out there before I get into the main list. So, number five on the list, Tyler Smith started at left guard. I told y'all, if y'all saw my last video, I was like, listen, they're, they're playing musical chairs with Tyler Smith, putting them here and there, not putting them with the first team. Guess what? He ends up starting the game at left guard. Just like I said, it was going to happen. Now, when we get to maybe, I'm guessing the third preseason game, no, I'm guessing the second preseason game is going to be more of a dress rehearsal kind of thing. Um, we'll see when we get there if anything changes. But Tyler Smith started the game, which is promising. Um, some other news for you. So the reason they're doing this to Tyler Smith is because he wasn't a, you know, coach's pick. Okay, so for those of you that are a little naive, in the NFL, not even in the NFL, in the N, whether it's the job force, the NFL, in government stuff, everybody has their picks. Everybody has their crew, their cronies, if you will. And supposedly, Tyler Smith was picked when in the draft. Tyler Smith was picked by... Mike McCarthy and the scouts. He wasn't picked by um, Joe Philbin, who is the offensive line coach. And because he wasn't a Joe Philbin pick, um, that's why he's like going to have to work for his position, which is all around stupid. He's clearly better than Connor Williams. He's clearly better than Connor McGovern. Who else are you going to put there? So I just, you know, that's basically why Tyler Smith is getting put through the rigmarole on this team. Um, secondly, the wide receiver situation, Jalen Tol Tolbert was dropping passes. Um, Devin Hunter, I believe his name, Dustin Hunter, Devin Hunter, um, in fact, let's look it up now. Let's look it up now. I'm just gonna go. I'm just gonna go to the game stats. Um, let's see. Dennis Houston. Lord have mercy. I was all the way off. <laughs> but Dennis Houston. Um, Dennis Houston. I mean. He's one of those guys, he's kind of like, uh, if y'all remember Lance Lenore. Lance Lenore just kind of came out of nowhere, and he kind of stayed with the team for a while. Never really, never really made an impact on, you know, when he came into the game during the season, but the coaches kept him around. He stayed around, and for some, I mean, you know, he... He's a co he, I guess he was a, like a coach's pick. He was a guy that the coaches liked, and therefore they kept him around. And I, the only thing I can say about that is your, your eyes tell you who's better and who, who's good and who isn't. Do your eyes really tell you that Dennis Houston is better than the guys who have been here? CeeDee Lamb. Um. Semi Fajoko, Noah Brown. Is he even better than James Washington and Jalen Tol Tolbert? He just kind of came out of nowhere. So, I don't know. Um, I will say this. Jake Ferguson and uh, Peyton Hendershot played pretty well to be backup tight ends because um, whether y'all like it or not, Dalton Schultz is gone after this year. 
I'm, I'm, the only way Dalton Schultz remains on this team is if he learns how to be, a, uh, if he gets better at blocking. And 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 I'm, I mean, he just needs to be average. Like that's how bad he was as a blocker last year. He just needs to be average. Like, can you just be average for us? So, you know, yeah, it is what it is. <laughs> Can you can you just be average? Can you just be an average blocker? If you can be an average blocker, we might consider giving you 15 million a year. But even then, I don't think you're worth 15 million a year. It's not like he stretches the field either. See, the beautiful thing about guys like Travis Kelsey, Travis Kelsey, and George Kittle, they stretch the field. They can run downfield and and catch a 30, 40 yard pass. Ben DiNucci is going to, he's he's Jason Witten light, literally. He's gonna he's gonna find a hole in the defense, get right to the first down line, maybe break one tackle, and then he's going down. He's he's not gonna stretch, he, he's not gonna be that reliable. And even then, Jason Witten would turn and run and you know be a bruiser. And then listen, Jason Witten was a better blocker. It's not even close. He's in another realm when it came to blocking. So the wide receiver situation is is a problem. Uh, secondly, defensive line looks good. Can't complain. Defensive line looks a whole lot better, especially when it comes to stopping the run. Now, granted, they were going up against second-team guys. But if you look at the stats – if you look at this, if you look at the game, the Broncos scored because of the re, of the number two reason of the next reason I'm going to bring up. The Broncos only had 39 rushing yards. Defensive line, we, defensive line is clearly better. Dan Quinn is doing his thing. He is in his bag. So. And we even beat the Broncos in first downs. We had more first downs, pretty even on third down efficiency. Um, we had more plays than them. Um, we only punted one more time than they did. Um, of course, they had. One, we even had better time of possession, and we and of course we had the one turnover. So. This is this part is promising. If we can stop the run and make a team one dimensional, that's a win in my book. So, shout out to Dan Quinn and that defensive line. Granted, like I said, it was against second team guys. I get it. Doesn't matter. You so preseason, we we all you got a lot of NFL experts that they'll say don't put a lot of stock in the preseason. I put I put not a lot. The preseason is like a penny stock. You put some in there and hope for the best. But the little changes that you see do matter, if you will. Um, yeah, but, but yeah, defensive line looks really good. Um, next thing, the cornerback play. Now, <laughs> And and this is where you this is where you have to be use a little common sense. Yeah, the Cowboys st- stopped the run. They 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 did a good job stopping the run. And yes, it was against second and third team guys. But our cornerbacks could not stop the pass, and it was against second and third team guys. Now, uh, if you have been keeping up. The uh, the Cowboys cornerback coach, Joe Witt Jr., he has been dealing with some personal issues, so he's been away from the team. So maybe, um, and and then on top of that, the, the, the other cornerback coach, Al Harris, who I like personally, um, he's not been getting along with a lot of the, a lot of the cornerback players. They, they've been kind of button heads a little bit. You know, they're a little bit, you know, they're, they're new school. They, they don't like all the yelling and the pushing and, 
and stuff that and Al Harris is a fiery guy. I remember him when he was at Green Bay. He's he's no pushover. You you ain't just gonna, you know, push Al Harris over. And dare I say, we need more guys like that on this team. Do y'all remember what the 49ers did to us in the playoffs? They literally, they literally pushed us down and and told us to stay down. Don't get up. So we need that toughness, that that fieriness. We need something. <laughs> this team needs it bad. Like, really, really bad. This team needs it bad. And you got the cornerback, he, he yelling at too much. He, he ain't got to do all that, man. Come on, bro. You're in the NFL. You're in the NFL. Yeah, yeah, and you're trying to win a Super Bowl. The, the, the fans are desperate now, and they're, and they're getting impatient. And, and, and it comes out, y'all don't, li- y'all don't like to hear all that. Y'all don't, want, y'all don't want all that toughness in your life. Man, come on, bro. Come on, bro. Like, like, it's time to get over it. So, whether it's coaching or whether the players are just, you know, weren't trying hard, I don't know. But, and then it, when Nashawn Wright, I mean, come on, bro. Nashawn, come on, man. You, you are the, you, let me see, I think you're like 6'2". I think you're like 6'2". Dude, you 6'4", 190. You 6'4", 190. You should, I mean, granny, you might, uh, oh, snap, his birthday is September 23rd, same as my mama and and my mama and daddy's anniversary. Um, But, bruh, come on now, like, what was your 40? You ran a 4'4", four, four, I mean, so, um, but still, what was your, what was your three cone? Seven nine seven one. That's pretty good. It's pretty good. So I don't know. I don't know. But he um he got torched. He got torched. And I wish there was a way I can get the all twenty two. You know, a lot of people. I hearken back to the game against the Raiders last year. Anthony Brown just they picked on Anthony Brown that whole game, but. If you look at the season, Anthony Brown was probably the best corner. Trayvon was was making interceptions, but Anthony Brown was holding down his side of the field all season long. So, you know, one game can, you know, perception is everything. And even though I hate that, but but one game can literally, you know, define a player. But Cornerback play is suspect. It is suspect. I mean, them, it, and it's really the long balls. The long balls. And you know what? I I will say those were some very tough catches to make. That's the optimism right there. The Broncos made some very tough catches. One, like, there was one play I think the corner fell. I think if if I remember correctly, the Broncos were all the way back on that, like the sec two or one or two yard line or something like that, and the cornerback, whoever the cornerback was, tripped and fell, and so the guy was wide open. Other than that play, I don't think the Broncos had it easy catching those passes. But I remember back when we faced the Broncos last year, Tim Patrick was just all over the place. And he was catching everything. Even though there was good to decent coverage around him, he caught every ball that was thrown to him. And Terry Bridgewater, I mean, let's face it, he's he's an old he's 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 solid. He's solid. I think if if everybody around him is great, Terry Bridgewater could win a Super Bowl. But he's not going to be the guy that, you know, leads. He's not Aaron Rodgers. And, and, you know, that's another conversation for another day. But these so-called quarterbacks that can lead a team to a Super Bowl, 
they're far and few in between. You know, they, these these guys don't grow on trees. They, they're, they're not, these guys are not normal, okay? There's few guys like that, but not every guy is like that. Um, so, cornerback play. The optimism is, it seems like, when I was watching the highlight, it seems like the um, the Broncos made some very difficult catches. So, that is a good thing. Um, but we still need to um, be a little, might need to just not panic. I don't think we need to panic or everything. We just need to keep an eye out on it. Just, just keep an eye out on it. And last, let me readjust myself. Last but not least, the most egregious thing that I saw in this game, penalty. Penalty, penalty, penalty. Penalty. Ladies and gentlemen, the Dallas Cowboys has 17 penalties for 129 yards. Uh, you know, um, I'm going to tell you right now, we can probably make it to the NFC Championship game. We can probably, you know what? We can make it to the Super Bowl. But I promise you, if the reason we lose any of those games, if the most glaring reason we lose either one of those games is penalties, Mike McCarthy's gone. Mike McCarthy's gone. This is this is getting ridiculous. I listen. I am a believer. I am a believer that insanity is when you keep doing the same thing over and over again, expecting different results. Mike McCarthy. What Mike McCarthy is doing is insane. Whatever you're doing, whatever he is doing to fix the problems with these penalties, it's not working. It's not working. All okay. right, this, this right here, and I know some people are going to say, it's just preseason. It's just preseason. I don't care. I don't care. It, it, this, this bothers me. This bothers me. And, and if you're a real Cowboy fan, it should bother you too. 17 penalties. You even had, I was listening to the broadcast. Brad Sham is literally, this is how much optimism he has. When they got to 16, I think it was either 15 or 16 penalties. Brad Sham was just like, hey, well, we're going to break the record tonight, y'all. <laughs> and the Dallas Cowboys produce another penalty. Ryan, I think they can they can beat the record tonight, Ryan. I mean, like, that's how bad. Like, Brad Sham lost all hope that they could just stop committing penalties. And it was like five minutes left in the game. And he was just like, we're, we're breaking the record. <laughs> that's sad when your own announcer is like hey they're hey they're gonna do it <laughs> that you you should have optimism like that when it comes to good things you know what i mean i don't i don't know what the nfl record for most points scored in a game is i'm guessing it's around maybe 70 or 80 if the cowboys were to score 70 points with 10 minutes left in the fourth quarter, yeah, a part of you would think, hey, damn, they got a chance to break the record. You know what I mean? But um, <laughs> I mean, this, this, it, it, listen, that was the most that that was the most telling thing when your own announcer 
And shout out to Brad Shan. I I was think I'm not gonna lie. I was thinking the same thing. I was thinking the, when he said it. I was literally thinking the same thing when he said it. I'm like, wait, the NFL record or the Cowboys record is 18? Oh, they're they're beating that. <laughs> they're beating that. I mean, so many drives, and that's the thing about it. It's like, okay, I would rather you have. I would rather you have, if you have 17 penalties for over 150 yards, I would hope they're all, like, defensive. At least be defensive penalties. You know, illegal contact, pass interference, holding. Because, like, just about every false, I mean, offsides, just about every defensive penalty is an automatic first down. It's an automatic first down. Illegal contact, defensive holding, pass interference, face mask, um, targeting, roughing the passer, uh, uh, what the uh, not in the, um, illegal touching. I think I don't know if illegal touching is a first down. Um, what what is it when you know just just um person personal the personal fouls all of these are first downs so they're drive continuous but the the ones that are most egregious are the ones on offense because they're drive killers they're drive killers you're you're literally killing your drive you were doing so well and then you said, nah, we good. You know what I mean? You, you're driving down the field, holding. You're driving out, false start. You, you know, you, these, these, these focus penalties, these lack of focus penalties, it, it's ridiculous, man. It's ridiculous. And, and, and I dare say, if, like I said, we can go to the NF- NFC Championship game. We can go to the Super Bowl. If these guys, if they lose those games, and, and a glaring reason we lose those games is because of penalties, especially um, progress stopping penalties, lack of focus penalties. I remember... Like, I remember when, and even though Jason Garrett was the coach, it was the most Dallas Cowboy thing ever. When we were again, when we played the Packers, when Mike McCarthy was the coach, because I actually think that's the year they won the Super Bowl. When we played the Packers, um, or no, that was the year, I know, I think they lost the Super Bowl. They either... They either got to the NFC Championship and lost, or they actually went to the Super Bowl. No, no, no. That was the dead, the dad's catch years when they won the Super Bowl. Um, but that year when they played the Cowboys and we went 13 and 3, 2016, the most special season we've had since I've been alive. I mean, I was I was alive during the um, you know, the 90, the Jimmy Johnson teams, but I didn't really know what was going on you know what I mean that 2016 team had every right to go to the Super Bowl and win a Super Bowl okay every right so but I harken back I remember at the beginning of that game I'm just very first possession of the game the very first possession of the game freaking too many men in the huddle penalty. Like, that was the first time I had ever even heard of that penalty. Too many men in the huddle? And it was the it was the most Dallas Cowboys penalty ever. Too many men in the huddle. Too many men in the, like, too many men in the huddle. Like, that penalty itself was just the most egregious thing I had ever seen in my entire life. 
ever heard in my entire life. And so, yeah, it, it, it's wild. It's just wild, but I, 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 I don't know what to tell you. I don't know what to tell you. That just anyway, that's what I'm. That's what I think about when it comes to these penalties, and they need to fix it fast. They need to fix it real fast. But <sighs> other than that, I mean, Ben DiNucci played well. <laughs> We had to rely on Ben DiNucci. I wish Will Greer was able to get into the game because um, we would have really got to see. Because supposedly there's really a, a quarterback, comp a backup quarterback competition. We're really trying to see is Cooper Rush the guy. And I've always liked Cooper Rush. Um, I remember his, I think it was his rookie season. He lit the preseason up like he, he would have been trade bait. Like, he really would have been trade bait that year. Um, first two years in the league, he lit the preseason up, and then I don't, I just don't know what happened. I, I don't know what happened after that. But um, there is a legitimate quarterback battle at, at the backup quarterback spot. But we shall see. Let me, let me, I'm going to do another video on the preview of the next um, preseason game. Let me see who we face. We play the Chargers. And I actually think we're going to have another joint practice with them also. So, so that should be fun. That should be, that should be cool. And, um, yeah, I don't think there's any other cowboy news out there. Let me go to the website. Because I'm I'm 30 minutes, I'm at 30 minutes, so I'm not gonna waste you all's time anymore. Uh let's see. Yeah, questions and concerns. Um Time for Tyler Smith show to begin. Yeah, yeah, nothing. Yeah, nothing, nothing, nothing to write home about. But it is what it is. Hopefully, hopefully they get better with these penalties. Uh, defensive line looks good. I'm questioning the wide receiver situation. Cornerback play needs to be a little bit better. And, I mean, Tyler Smith looks pretty good. So it's your boy, Billy Mac. We will holler at you next time and check out my, I will have a video up at the end of the week to preview the game against the Chargers. It's your boy, Billy Mac. I'll holler at you next time. Peace.